when the veterans complained that the minister had missed their meeting, he said, quote, I'm not going to stand here and listen to that, and he stormed out. Excellent. How is that acceptable to the Prime Minister? Will the Prime Minister do the right thing, apologize himself, and fire that incompetent? Mr. Speaker, the Minister has apologized for, uh, for the events of yesterday, but the fact of the matter is that this government and this Minister have increased services for our veterans without precedent. More calls for the resignation of Veterans Affairs Minister Julian Fantino today after yesterday's heated confrontation with a group of veterans, which we showed you live on this program, their press conference. The veterans were angry with the minister for missing a meeting with them. They're protesting the closure of several Veterans Affairs offices that will happen, eight of them across the country on Friday. The minister apologized for missing the meeting. He actually tried to call the vets on the phone today, but their vets have rejected the apology. Should the Veterans Affairs Minister resign? Is the government doing enough to respond to the needs of the concerns of Canada's vets? Joining me now, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade. He's a veteran himself, and he was with those vets just before that meeting with Minister Fantino. Aaron O'Toole is here. The NDP Veterans Affairs critic Peter Stauffer is here, and the Liberal Defence critic Joyce Murray is here. Thanks for all of you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, you were at the meeting with the veterans yesterday. I want to show you what World War II vet Roy Lamore, who I spoke with, uh, said after your meeting with them so you can respond. Here it is. Go to a meeting that where the individual didn't show and ended up brought three veterans, politicians, to argue against the rest of us. That's a damn disgrace. Three veterans that, and they couldn't give us the honest answers that we asked for. Mr. Otto, I spoke with these veterans, and some of them are going to be on the show later. They've said they felt disrespected, they've rejected the, apolo the apology, uh, and they had a verbal confrontation with the minister. What's their response? Now, listen, Evan, it's really unfortunate how everything went yesterday. Um, the minister apologized for it, but I was at that meeting because I asked to be at that meeting. I was not put there because the minister couldn't come or anything like that. I met with some of these veterans the first time they came to Ottawa as part of a Peace Act event. When min the minister was going to be late, his staff said clearly, the minister's going to be late, could he maybe meet you and have dinner later? Um, but the veterans said they had a press conference and a meet and greet later. Um, and it's too bad, the confrontation that happened later on was really too bad. But I, I, do, I do think it's important to state here that there was a series of scheduled events yesterday that some passionate veterans that I have a lot of respect for were at, but the entire day was orchestrated by the PSAC union, and they had a press conference to make, and then an, a meet and greet with PSAC, and didn't want to meet with the minister later. It's unfortunate it was late at cabinet. But, but Mr. O'Toole, are you suggesting these veterans from Afghanistan, from World War II, are pawns of a union PR stunt? Evan, the original PSAC launch uh, took place last year when the House wasn't sitting. They invited all MPs. I went. I happened to be in Ottawa. And I asked Mr. Clark a question at that event, which was essentially a media event by PSAC. And I said, how can we make this change impact you less? Because you have to remember, these offices don't deliver services to our veterans. We're expanding services. We need to do more and are trying to do more in mental health, a whole range of issues. The, the, the standalone offices are only access points. My area of Durham, and I said this to the veterans when I met with them last year, my area of Durham, which is larger than any of these eight cities, uh, has never had a Veterans Affairs officer. But, but Under the on, new program, on, they have four offices. offices. But hang on, I, listen, this is important. I've talked to these vets, and I'm going to ask them the same question. Are you suggesting that their concerns are not as valid as they're saying because you're saying they're simply pawns of a union issue to protect union jobs and that their concerns that they're here to voice and that they did in that press conference are not valid because what they're because they're part of an orchestrated union event I think it would be important to ask for details on the day schedule there was two press conferences the only question when we had there was two veterans in the room the only question they had for us is are you going to reverse the decision and we said no. And then we wanted to discuss the new 17 offices we're opening for operational stress. We had somewhat of a positive discussion at times with all the veterans, including Mr. Clark, who a few months ago I phoned at home to tell him that we were keeping a Veterans Affairs official in the Service Canada office. There was a veteran there that has been accessing services online. So, you know, we had a bit of a discussion on how the offices themselves are only one way to access 
the benefits. The, the offices themselves, and it's important, Evan, don't deliver, don't oh, deliver okay. care. Okay, so, so I want to get bring the offices, but just quickly, will Minister Fantino step down or resign because of the way he treated those veterans? The, the minister apologized today for for missing the original meeting and how the, the the subsequent meeting went. But like I said, when when his office asked to to meet with them later, even to meet for dinner, they had a schedule they were following and said they couldn't they couldn't meet him. They already had a press conference planned. So my 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 impression, Evan, having worked on these issues since I left the Canadian Forces, working with veterans, is that they had that press conference planned and they already had their answer ready for the press conference. Well, that, that's, that's just my impression. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll re relay that to the vets in a minute. Mr. Stauffer, what's your take? Do you think Minister Fantino's apology is enough? Should it be accepted? Well, it, I'm not the one he's apologizing to. It is the veteran community themselves. And they're the ones who decide whether or not to accept an apology. I have to admit that I am pleased that the Minister did apologize and understand that his actions were wrong yesterday. But as I said in the House of Commons today, Evan, in 16 and a half years as a Member of Parliament, through 10 different Veterans Affairs Ministers from two different political parties, yesterday was the lowest of the low. And that's why we today publicly asked for his resignation. What do you make of the fact when Mr. O'Toole says that this was essentially a union stunt? We've heard that from the Prime Minister today, and I've spoken to other Conservative members of Parliament who believe that in many cases this was staged by the PSAC. I remind the Conservatives that members of the military and RCMP and their families are not unionized, and it's also the job of a union to stand up for its members. But the reality is these individual um, uh, veterans that were there yesterday spoke from the heart. They spoke from what they believed in. They were given no talking points from anyone. They specifically indicated what these closures would mean to them and their families. So it wasn't a so-called stunt by the union. The union assisted in getting them, there's no question, to Parliament Hill to discuss their concerns. But to indicate or even slant it in a way that this was the PSAC stunt is simply wrong. Uh, Joyce uh, Murray, what's your take on this? Uh, Minister Fantino's apologized. Uh, do you still think he should be fired? Well, as I've said earlier today, he did apologize, and then he apologized in the House as well. But, Evan, I think really what's behind this has to do with your, the other part of your original question, which is, is the government listening and doing enough for veterans? And the answer is a resounding no. So not only are they not addressing the concerns, the very legitimate the concerns veterans have had, for months now with respect to uh, services, with respect to pensions and, and those kinds of things, they've gone beyond betraying the veterans, they're now insulting them. And I think that there is an underlying uh, dismissive attitude towards what the veterans are asking for and that's showing up in the kind of behavior uh, that uh, the Prime Minister showed in the House when he also alluded to a union uh, of being behind this and the minister's uh, t terrible, uh, embarrassing behavior yesterday. Mr. O'Toole, a lot of people are tweeting this, so I want to ask. What did, Mr., what did Minister Fantino have that was so important that he couldn't meet with a group of World War II and Afghan veterans who want to talk about this? What was more important than meeting with the vets? Uh, Evan, I understand that he had a committee of cabinet that he was presenting to, and the cabinet meeting went late. And that's what his, his office relayed. When they made the offer in, in the room where I was, was with Mr. Hahn and Mr. Gill uh, to, to push it back a little later and perhaps even have uh, a dinner. And it was rejected because they, they couldn't make it. They had the press conference and a meet and greet. Uh, and should the minister have handled this differently? I mean, we've seen the videotape. It escalates. He said, don't point your finger at me. He walked out of the meeting. And I understand there's, these vets were very passionate about this and there was a lot of emotion there. By the same token, do you think Minister Fantino handled the veterans' concerns in a way that was appropriate? Listen, Evan, I saw the, the, the clip of the confrontation. There were passions. Certainly, I know the veterans. They expressed them to us. I've talked to some of them at the original PSAC event. I met one of them in Brandon, who was also doing stuff related to these issues. I understand passions. What we're trying to say is we're not only trying to provide more service, we're trying to evolve but it in a better way. But did the minister handle the passion fairly? I, I think he shouldn't have at that point gone and seen them just before the press conference. But like I said, he did try and have a later meeting with them. But 
I didn't get the sense, sincerely, Evan, that there really was much that they wanted to talk about. They wanted a yes or no answer, and they, they had a, a press conference already scheduled. So it, it's disappointing, but he's still trying to reach out to but them to say... But it sounds like it Aaron's blaming it, the it veterans. Ended up, it ended Evan? up in a bad way. Are we hearing the veterans being blamed now for that situation? I, I mean, from what I saw, uh, Minister Fantino's behavior was unworthy of any elected member of parliament and disrespectful to the veterans. And so uh, for now, us I'll, to hear I'll, I'll a rationalization on the, on that, is, uh, makes at things the, worse in my view. At the first event, I mentioned yesterday, uh, I got first 10 event, seconds here. I spoke to Mr. Clark at the first event and he said, we need somebody that has veterans training in the Service Canada in Sydney. I spoke to Minister Fantino about that, and he made that happen. So as of next week, there will be a trained VA caseworker in Sydney. Right. So he has been listening, and we're going to continue okay. to listen. A lot of words and no action. Uh, Aaron Ochoa, Peter Stauffer, and Joyce Murray, I appreciate your time today. Uh, we will speak with those uh, veterans, get their take on what's next here. And, of course, we're watching the situation on Friday as well when these closures are set to take place. I always appreciate the three of you coming on the program. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.